Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. This is another one of those I can't seem to pull myself together mornings. I don't know what it is. Some mornings I get dressed, get my makeup on, get going, and I'm, I'm there. And then some mornings I just can't, probably because of what went on last night with Finn. I'll give you the full update at the end of the video. Um, but we're all very tired, and Finn is currently sound asleep on his chair, uh, worn out from last night. So... Um, let's just jump in because we have a lot to cover again today. Let's go. For our photo for today, we're going to start off from a website called Curiosity on Twitter. And this is Wild Deer at Dawn in Canada. Oh my goodness. All right, I decided to add a second picture also from the same website, Curiosity. It's called The Night the Moon Dressed Like Saturn. And apparently the photo was taken by somebody called Francisco Sogel. Beautiful. All right, let's jump in with what we have. We, we do have a few stories that have popped out this morning, so let's go. We're going to start off with a coffee recipe that was sent to me. Now, you guys know how much I love coffee. My coffee fun literally is for coffee. And for those who are new to the channel, I gave up drinking coffee, which I absolutely adore, during COVID uh, to donate that money to Meals on Wheels for, you know, the elderly and to the animal shelter, which are two of the most vulnerable, vulnerable populations I felt. And so not long after I started the channel, somebody suggested I start a coffee fund, and I did. So um, that's where the money's been going. So this recipe was sent to me, and it absolutely looks delicious. I mean, I can't wait to try it. But just so you guys know, disclaimer, this is not on my diet. Um, but I'm still going to try it, though. But let's take a look at the recipe, shall we? All right, so here's the recipe. Now I'm gonna be able to make some changes because with my coffee machine, okay, so yes, I can pour eight ounces of condensed milk into a cup. I can make the espresso with my coffee machine. Um, and then it says bring the evaporated milk to a simmer and then pour on top, okay? And then you take the whole milk and you froth it. Well, I can do that again with my coffee machine. And as you can see here, this is what it's supposed to look like. Now, this person also adds um, sugar to the espresso. So, I'm, you know, that sounds like something I would do. Anyway, I'll let you guys know how this turns out as soon as I try it. Yeah, my love of coffee. My legendary love of coffee. All right, moving on. All right, you guys, I can't believe it. But Prince Andrew still wants to find a way back to a working royal status. Apparently he's holding very intense talks with the queen um, because I think he knows that once his mother passes away and Charles is in charge or William is in charge, they are never in a million years going to allow him to undertake royal duties. So he's all over his mother trying to get something handled before that happens. Dude needs to give it up. I know he wasn't convicted with anything. I know, but the optics are not good. He should have fought it out. All right, moving on. All right, I just had to put this up. Apparently, the Sussex squad is accusing Prince William of staging a fake summit and a fake crowd in September over jealousy of what Harry did at the UN. So essentially, what they're saying, in case you know you didn't catch that, <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, I have to try not to laugh. What they're saying is that the UN staff can be bought. And if that's the case, then why didn't Harry and Meghan buy a crowd? I mean, they made Harry look really stupid. I completely agree. May I also just say, Harry did not address... The UN was not in session at the time, guys. When William goes, the UN will be in session and it will be uh, a real crowd. He doesn't have to pay for crowds, you guys. Oh, my God. All right, moving on. Okay, now my story about uh, Megan running for Senate. Well, you guys had a lot of comments about that. Springsteen said that they would like to see her be interviewed by Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, and Megan Kelly. Oh, my goodness. That would be, oh. 
Angelica made an interesting point. Ms. Markle, you said you wanted to serve your country. Is that the truth, your truth, or the objective truth? <laughs> I love it. Uh, they'd have her storming off in a huff in the first five minutes. Angelica, you know the first thing that she would say to the interviewers is you're a racist. The second they asked her any hard questions, she would scream racism. I mean, oh my goodness. And Effie Parker pointed out that Megan might actually make a great politician because they specialize in self-service pocket lining, sitting on their, you know what's an endless lip service. Seems to me a perfect fit. I hadn't thought about that, but um, actually you are correct. All right, next up, moving on, I wanted to point something out to you guys. I showed you an article where the Archibald Foundation in 2020 only made $50,000. Well, just to give you an example, a tiny cat sanctuary in Wales and a boy in a tent raised more for charity at that point than Harry and Meghan's work. The cat sanctuary near Port Talbot in South Wales is a not-for-profit organization that helps cats find loving homes, all right? And actually, the Surrey and Hampshire Canal Society, the French Porcelain Society, and the Hindley Amateur Rugby League Football Club also made more money according to the Charity Commission records. Um, now, according to this article, that's not saying that those aren't worthy, but you have to wonder why they made more than Archwell. Now, we know that Harry and Meghan's uh, foundation is supposed to be an impact-driven nonprofit, and their core purpose is to uplift and unite communities online, offline, one compassionate act at a time. You have to wonder if their behavior towards their families has impacted their income. We know that Megan's father had a stroke. She has yet to reach out to him. And right up until before she met Harry, she was writing wonderful things about him over and over on the TIG. What a great person he was. She's been trashing him since the minute she met Harry. And as a result, Harry has never met Thomas. Um, and you have to wonder if that's, you know, f affecting what's going on. Now, Archwell is claiming it's because of COVID that that happened. I question that. I honestly think it has something more to do with their behavior and the way they treat their families and the lies they've been caught telling and the fact that people found out that they're allowed to keep 95% of anything that comes in for expenses. So people are like, why should I help support your lifestyle? I'm just going to go over here and give my money directly. You have to look at these charities and what they're doing to help raise money. Now look at this child. This is 11 year old Max Woozy. And he decided to sleep in a tent in his backyard to raise a hundred pounds for his local hospice in Devon, which he was afraid would lose its funding during lockdown. So he started in March of 2020 and he's still camping out. Now, by the end of 2020, he had reached 107,000 pounds for hospice, and now it's up to 650,000 pounds. So when you look at that, you have to wonder what happened to Harry and Meghan's unparalleled global reach. Let's not forget that Harry and Meghan opened MWX Foundation in 2020 in the UK, and then they shut it down, and they had to spend more than 42000 in legal fees as part of the closure process. As a matter of fact, their charities spent more on legal fees than they raised in donations in that one year. Now, that's saying something. So while all these other charities were like working, working, working and going into overdrive while COVID was going around, Harry and Meghan's foundation didn't really do anything. <laughs> did, did nothing. Now, in the meantime, they're living in their $11 million home in Santa Barbara, you know, Montecito. They have a large domestic staff. They have a private security detail. They're traveling around in private jets. And, um, but yet, yeah, they really didn't do a whole heck of a lot for charity. And so they did the Netflix and the Spotify, and they said that that wasn't part of the plan, which of course, we found out later on they had already been speaking to streaming services before they left the UK. We found out that that was also a lie. 
I mean, I, for one, will be very interested to see the 2021 paperwork from Archwell because I got to be honest, most people, even the Sussex squad, they're not stupid. Now they have done, the Sussex squad has done some really great things. They've done a lot of fundraising, but they were very smart and they sent that money directly to the charities. They did not give it to Archwell because I think they knew what would happen to the money. Good for them. All right, let's move on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this article came up. I was like, oh my goodness. Now, if anything, this just shows the smack of desperation for money. Because people who are multimillionaires and live in the dream, you know, when you're when you're there to support charities, you don't do stuff like this. Uh, uh, okay, so apparently Harry and Meghan are going to host a summit in Manchester. If you want to attend, it's a thousand pounds a day. And it aims, it says, to bring together the brightest young leaders from every country and sector with the lofty ambition to confront the biggest challenges facing humanity. Unbelievable. But to do it, you're going to have to pay. Now, it's a thousand pounds a day. It's a three day event. And that does not include the cost of traveling to, Chan to Manchester or your hotel. So those attending the conference for the first time and hoping to get a ticket are gonna have to spend, including accommodations, about 4,210 pounds. So for those of you who want the calculation, that's $4,977. Let's just round it up. It's $5,000 so that you can go to this conference center and, and do this, this thing with them. And you, you won't be the only person there. So um, now the conference organizers are claiming that this is what they're stating. It's alleged that Harry and Meghan won't be paid for that. And that 30% of young people will attend on a scholarship and that's what the money's for. However, how many times have we heard from people, you guys, that they're doing things and not getting paid? And then we find out later on that there might have been some shenanigans behind the scenes for payment. <coughs> Oprah interview. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. All right, this next story, you know, we already talked about the fact that um, Harry has not given an advanced copy of his book to William or Charles. Um, now, I'm thinking he's not doing that because Penguin Random House knows that if anything really bad is in there, that um, they could sue. If anything is considered to be, um, what's the word? inflammatory, I guess, or a flat out lie or, you know, defamation, whatever. Anyway, their lawyers, Harry's lawyers and advisors have told him not to let them read the book. And apparently, um, Charles's lawyers and advisors have been kept in the dark about what's in the book. We know it was written by a ghostwriter. We know that uh, supposedly, allegedly, it's being reported that Megan had a hand in what was written in the book. And supposedly it's going to be on the shelves in time for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, we already know what's going to be in this book. We already know he's going to trash Camilla. We already know that half of what's in there is going to be a lie. We know that he still believes his mother was murdered by the palace. His family killed his mother. We already know what's going to be in this book. And I, for one, will not be buying it. If, if I thought it was an honest, actual, factual book about his life i would want to read it just to see it from his side but knowing what's going on um yeah no all right this next article came up saying that harry and megan were very aware of the headache that was being caused by their uk trip and we know that there's many behind the scenes working out how to best handle this um with the family the upper levels of the family are, are really just not happy that they're coming back and everybody's stressed out. And um, here's what I think is gonna happen, I gotta be honest. I think with the new uh, prime minister being um, named, I think with the queen at Balmoral having to ask him to form a new government, I think with all of this stuff going on, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of um, newsworthy stuff going on with Harry and Meghan. I don't think that the news is gonna be focused on them. now. 
that's not really that big of a deal for them because after all the Netflix cameras are there, Netflix can, you know, sub in claps and cheers and, and sub out the booze and, you know, all the stuff that they need to be done to make it look good for the cameras. We all know that. Uh, but we do know there's a public perception that people in the UK just don't like them. And so everybody's wondering, it's all hanging over, how are they going to interact with other members of the family? Well, the answer to that is very simple. They won't. Now, of course, Harry and Meghan's team is still putting out that they have a close, warm, wonderful relationship with the Queen. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that. I think the Queen is sharp as a tack. She knew what was going on with them, which is why she did everything she did during the Platinum Jubilee, sitting them where she did and everything. And they're saying they still hope to be able to meet up with the Queen while they're there. But um, why should she interrupt her holiday at Balmoral um, to see these two have, who have been nothing but a thorn in her side and who are trying to destroy all the work of 70 years? Why would they bother? They're saying that Harry and Meghan are not welcome to go to Balmoral. If the queen decides to meet them, it'll have to be done virtually. Um, that's just the way it is. And of course, we all know that if a meeting does take place, the royals will not discuss it. All that information will be coming from Harry and Meghan. And the reason it'll be coming from Harry and Meghan, as you guys are well aware, is they need to keep that royal connection because that is the only thing that makes them marketable. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the Sussex squad is thinking. If they hate the UK and the UK's racist and the family was racist and they treated them horribly, then stop using the titles and walk away. Walk away. Why doesn't the Sussex squad say to them, enough's enough, walk away? I don't get that. All right, this story came up. Um, you know, we know that when Harry and Meghan visit the UK, this is, they're calling it a deliberate provocation. Um, I don't know that I agree with that. They did keep up with these two charities, although as it turns out, they're not charities. They're not, they're businesses. So it's different. It's a, it's a different thing. I mean, guys, come on. They've already started the removal of titles bill there. It's it's already missed the first, or not missed, it's already passed the first few hurdles. Yeah, I think that the second Charles takes over, uh, they're finished. All right, next up, this story came out. Now, I've told you guys, and I've said it before, and I showed you that I said it before, I never understood why a couple who truly believes their life is in danger would go out of their way to announce, not only are we coming over, but this is where we're going to be at this time, on this date. Like, I don't get that. What they should have done was go to these things and then announce afterwards, you know, that I just feel like that would have been a better thing and safety, you know? So I kept wondering, why did they do that? Why did they do that? What's going on? Well, it's being claimed that the reason they did that was because they want the crowds to gather. They want people to be there to, to wave and scream and Harry, Megan. But I think they're going to be sorely disappointed because I think most people in the UK don't like them. Can you blame them? Who likes being called a racist every time? Like it's a joke. All right. Let's move on to our last story, which is about royalty, but not the current royals. All right, so some of you may be aware um, that I am a massive UK history buff. Um, I, I can't wait to get to the UK and see Whitehall and, and you know, Anne Boleyn. I, I need to see all of this. I really need to see all of this. <sighs> so anyway, um, apparently a breakthrough came out saying that Anne Boleyn's um, final hours have come out and that... Um, there, it's a big change from what they thought, which I think is really cool. All right, so here's some things that we do know. We do know where Anne was executed, when, why, how, we know that. But there's a lot of information we don't know, like who went to the scaffold, you know, the ladies that walked up to the scaffolding with her, who was with her in her last final hours. And there apparently is a document that they just found that provides key evidence about her death, which, you know, everybody's obsessed with this one. I'm obsessed with this woman and she's been dead for how long? Like it's insane. So there was a document unearthed in the British Library's archives that shows that one of her maids of honor, Elizabeth Holland, 
was with her in the tower <clears throat> in the tower and there was an inscription in the book of hours which we all know is the prayer book it's a manuscript um used by Henry and Anne to exchange love messages to each other. And the Book of Hours contains the married name of one of Anne Boleyn's maids of honor. And it said when she served Anne, she was known as Bessie Holland. So she was Elizabeth Bessie Holland. And she was the mistress of the Duke of, of Norfolk. And that's how she became one of Anne's maids, because she, um, he was Anne's uncle. So this prayer book, or Book of Hours as it was known back then, um, would have been later owned by her maid of honor. And Bess was known to be very close to Anne as a member of her staff. And so there's a new research into Anne's books of hours at Hever Castle. Now remember, these people thought that they were living in end times. And so everything was around your prayer book, like every hour what you should be doing. Like it's, it's just crazy how they used to live back then. And there's, of course, other sources that apparently corroborate, corroborate, I might be having trouble speaking, her presence in Anne's household after 1533, so that's after the coronation. And her name and her husband's name are inscribed in this book of hours. So people are thinking she may have gotten that book from Anne herself while she was attending her in the tower or maybe even on the scaffold. You know, we, it, it, she had her ladies, the ladies are the ones that stepped forward, removed her headrest, you know, removed her jewelry, put the cap on her head, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's thinking, it's thought that the book was handed to her and she kept it. For me, that's so exciting. I know I sound like a complete nerd, but it's very excited. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all right. This was sent to me by one of my followers. Now, I don't pretend to understand the legal ins and outs of what the heck is happening between Twitter and Bot Sentinel and all this stuff that's going on where, you know, Twitter says that they didn't work with him and then he put out stuff saying they did and I don't know what's going on. But now they're threatening to remove him from Twitter. And I, again, I don't understand the whole legal stuff of what's happening. I don't get it. So this was sent to me and I'm gonna put the link in the box. It's not a long video, but it gives a complete understanding of what is happening, why it is happening, how it is happening, and makes you understand, I don't know, the whole scenario. So my suggestion is that you guys, it's, it's exactly nine minutes and 49 seconds long. I suggest you read it and it will, it'll really make you understand what the heck is happening with Elon Musk, Twitter, and Bot Sentinel. And once again, the link to this is in the description box. I highly recommend you watch it because it really explains everything. All right, you guys, lots and lots and lots of information. I will try to put the animals in tomorrow's video. We had a rough night last night with Finn, um, and he is snoozing out this morning. Uh, in the middle of the night, there was a thunderstorm. It scared him. He literally was hunkered down between my husband and I under the covers, shaking, um, and that's what woke us up. And then when we woke up in fully in the morning, we found that he had literally pooped. He was so scared. He had pooped all over the carpet. So... Um, yeah, he, the poor thing had a really bad night. So, uh, but don't worry. He's snoozing away this morning, nice and, and fine. And the storm is over. So don't forget to leave those comments below because you know, I'm reading them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you've already hit the button, double check to make sure that you're still subscribed. Don't forget that you can follow me on Getter, Twitter, Rumble. You can email me for those who have donated to my coffee fund and through the thanks button. Thank you so much. And as always, you guys have a great day.